Shana Tova, everyone. You may be seated. Before there was a global pandemic named COVID, I would find myself in Washington, D.C. at least three to six times a year. I have the great fortune of sitting on the National Council for APAC, and I would go to Washington not only for programs with APAC, but to lobby our legislators about having a strong relationship between the United States and Israel and all of the shared interests that Israel and the United States have, not only financially and security, but value-based interests. And one of my great gifts in life has been creating relationships with our different legislatures and legislators and realizing their importance in the choices that they make that help both of the countries that are so near and dear to me and to all of you too. Just by happenstance, almost every time I go to DC, most of the meetings that I have with legislators happens in, to be in a building called the Rayburn Building. Now, I never understood anything about the building or its name or who bore the name Rayburn except it was called the Rayburn Building. But as I was doing some reading uh, this summer about some pretty interesting political leaders and figures, I found this fantastic story about someone named Sam Rayburn who happened to have been the Speaker of the House for 17 years. You're all nodding your head. Everyone nodding their head has gray hair. So that tells you when he was Speaker of the House. Now, there have been quite a few Speakers of the House, right? Tip O'Neill was a Speaker of the House. Uh, Ryan was the Speaker. Had lots of Speakers of the House, but not many of them have a building named after them. And there have been all types of legislators and senators and others who've been impressive leaders, but they don't have buildings named after him. So what made Rayburn have a building named after him? And I heard this fantastic story about him. Because, look, the truth is, when you are a politician, and when you're a politician that makes it to become Speaker of the House, chances are you're not lacking a lot of confidence. But there are plenty of people who rise to that level who are lacking humility. I want to share a story which I think merits the naming of the Rayburn Building as it is in his memory. When you are Speaker of the House, you regularly stand before a press pool. And they pepper you with all types of questions on a daily basis. And when you stand with that press pool, good politicians learn who those press people are and they develop a rapport and a relationship with them. And on one particular day, news had come to Speaker Rayburn that one of the people in the press corps that he had known had unexpectedly and tragically lost their 19-year-old child, died. It's a terrible thing. And the people, the journalist, was grieving in his home. The news had happened the night before. And that morning, that journalist opened up a knock on his door and standing there, was Speaker Rayburn at his front door in Washington, DC. The journalist said, thank you for being here, Speaker. And the Speaker said, what can I do to help you? He said, we've made all the arrangements. We're just in shock. I don't think there's anything to do. And the Speaker said, did you have coffee yet? The journalist said, no, we didn't have coffee. So Speaker Rayburn just makes his way into his house and says, the least I can do is make you and your wife a pot of coffee. And he goes into the kitchen without asking, and he finds the coffee, and he makes a pot. And he stands with them without saying much, but he's just there, the speaker of the house in this journalist's home. And all of a sudden, the journalist stops and says, hold on, because he was in a, just a fog, but for obvious reasons, he says, Mr. Speaker, you're supposed to be meeting with the president this morning because the journalist knew his schedule, he knew what he was supposed to do, and he knew about all of the stories he'd be covering on the beat. Now bear in mind, the Speaker of the House is the third in line to the presidency. Third in line. And Rayburn says, yes, I was supposed to meet with the president. <clears throat> and the journalist says, is everything okay? He said, yeah, everything's fine. He goes, well, why aren't you with the president? He said, I called the president's office and told him that my friend had suffered a terrible loss and that he needed me. So Speaker Rayburn put off his meeting with the President of the United States of America 
so that he could make a pot of coffee and be physically present to a journalist who was going through terrible loss and grief. You want to know what it is to be a leader? To have that level of humility, that's what it is to be a leader. Not confidence, humility, kindness, presence. That journalist can't tell me anything that Rayburn said, but he can tell me he was there. He can't tell you how that coffee tasted, but he knows that the Speaker of the House was present for him, for someone who needed him more than a regular briefing with the President of the United States. That's what humility is. There's a reason we start the Musaf prayer and all of the Musaf tefillah with the words of Hinani. Because it invokes not only from the Chazan and from the Rabbi, but it invokes from all of us a sense that we must have of humility. Not of confidence, not of swagger, but of being present, humble, and hearing that small sound where we can, and being present to make a difference. I can't wait to get back to Washington and continue to have in-person meetings with our legislators. And I can tell you that when I do, I'm going to take a moment of pause when I cross the threshold of that Rayburn building and appreciate its name, its namesake, and why it bears his name. And every day, both there and here, I'm going to strive to live my life in a way that emulates those very values.